So, um, the weak learner searches then for the optimal threshold classification function, and which is, of, of course, the one that is going to uh, misclassify or minimize the number of misclassifications. The weak classifier H consists of the feature F of, e of X and some threshold theta and some uh, parity uh, P. This parity is just a number that could be minus one or plus one and this will indicate uh, the direction of the uh, of the inequality here. So this parameter uh, parity, this p, notice that if you change, if you are using for example p uh, plus 1, this inequality uh, to be true you need uh, the uh, f to be less than theta, the threshold. Like I said, for example, maybe this 100. But if you change the sign of this, and now instead of being a plus one, it is a minus one, then to have this equality, inequality to be true, you would need this f to be uh, large, larger than, than theta. So this is just a trick. Just by changing the sign, you will flip uh, this inequality sign. So let's assume that we have selected a T weak classifier, so we are in iteration T, and a scalar constant alpha T is associated with each of our capital T uh, weak classifiers. So we have capital T number of weak classifiers. Each one of them will have some alpha, some confident parameter. So how, how, how much we trust the answer of that weak classifier. Uh, denote the, in, the inner product over all weak classifiers as F, this big F. So we can sum uh, the opinion of each of our T classifiers and we can multiply the answer of each of these H classifiers by the corresponding alpha. Our strong classifier then can be defined as the sign of this F of X. So we can compute this sum of the products and then the resulting number here, we simply check the sign of that number. If the sign is positive, then the final decision of our strong classifier is that this example X is a positive example. Otherwise, if the sign is negative, then the, the answer will be that that example is a negative example. So let's see um, the other boost algorithm. Let's consider that we have m examples in our data set. We first need to initialize the distribution, the i, and initially will be a uniform distribution. So every one of these m examples uh, will have the same importance, the same weight. So to do that, we simply divide one by m and the number here is going to be the same for every m example. So suppose that you have 100 examples. 1 over 100 will give you 0.1, sorry, 0 0.01. So each one of your 100 examples, we have a d in iteration 1 to be 0 0.01. So Given this uh, distribution, you need to learn the best weak classifier for that uh, distribution. So suppose that you, you use these four templates. You will apply your four templates in different positions of your uh, image patch. Uh, 
different positions and at different scales and you will consider different thresholds so it is as you can imagine this is a very exhaustive process where you need to apply these templates um, many times thousands of times that's why we we need to to define these weak learners to be very easy to compute because otherwise this will be a very time consuming process so you start applying just your templates and you will compute the weighted error for each of the these uh, templates that are going to be your weak classifiers your possible weak classifiers and as we saw before you will need to compute um, how many of, of your aim examples are misclassified so the the predicted uh, class is different to the original class and you will sum if for example exam uh, your example i is misclassified you will go and sum the weight that you assign to that uh, example so if we were talking about 100 examples and this is your first iteration and suppose that your example 1 is misclassified then you will sum 0.01 okay because we we said that 1 over 100 is 0.01 and that's that's going to be the weight or let's say the cost of misclassifying example 1 then you go to example 2 you classify it by your current uh, highlight feature if it is misclassified you again use some 1.1 to your current count so uh, in iteration 2 here you will get already 0 0.02 because your current weak classifier has misclassified the first two examples so you keep doing that with all your M examples and that way you will compute the error of your current classifier that you are evaluating uh, considering the, the initial distribution of weights D1 and all you have to do in this first step of the algorithm is to select the weak classifier with the minimum error so our first weak classifier will be that one that has the smallest error with your training data set once you have selected your first weak classifier you need to compute the alpha the confidence that you have in that classifier and as I said before uh, there is a formula which is this one that is a, a function of the error so here we have the natural logarithm of the result of this which is 1 minus the error divided by the error so this function is defined in such a way that if you have a small epsilon the result of this is going to be a large alpha a large number if you have a large epsilon you will have a small alpha later later on we are going to study or analyze where this formula comes from there is a way to derive this formula but we will see more on that later okay and the third step in our algorithm is to update the distribution the weights that we are assigning to each of the examples based on the performance so this is the formula to do that what you're saying here okay the distribution or the weight of an example i in the iteration in the next iteration in time t plus one is going to be uh, the product of the previous weight that this example i had times the exponential of minus alpha times y times h so uh, first let's understand this this part here the, the exponent of this uh, exponential we have here the product of the uh, original label or the correct label of example i and you need to multiply it by the prediction 
of the previous weak classifier so if the prediction is the same as the uh, class the correct class this product is going to be plus one okay if we're talking about a negative example this will be minus one times minus one and that gives you plus one and if this is a positive example then it's plus one times plus one which is again is as a plus one so if that is the case if the example was correctly classified by the previous weak uh, classifier then here we, we do will have minus alpha which is the confidence on that uh, weak classifier t h t and uh, what you are doing is that this exponential to this minus alpha is going to give you a small uh, number and when you multiply that small number uh, to the previous weight what you're doing is that you will be you will reduce the weight so the next weight the dt plus one is going to be smaller than the previous and that's going to happen because this example was correctly classified if the example was correctly classified it's like saying okay this example is very easy so i will reduce the importance of this because i want to give more importance to those examples that are misclassified those examples that are difficult or were difficult to classify classify by the previous uh, classifier so if you have a misclassification here then this number is going to be minus one minus one times minus is going to give you a positive and then the exponential of something that is positive uh, is going to give you a larger number and when you multiply it by d then you will increase the importance of that example i when this is uh, negative so when it is um, misclassified now so this is the effect of this factor here to increase or reduce the previous weight of some example i there is this denominator here this is this z is just a number that will guarantee that uh, in the end this function d is a, a distribution so it is a normalization denominator here so the way you can compute that when you implement this is simply in the first step ignore this z and simply compute the new uh, values for d with the uh, the product here so for every one of your m examples compute this product and store those values in your in your vector of the next uh, distribution values once you have uh, done that you can sum all of these values all of these numbers and you can compute actually you can compute this sum as you go in your for loop computing this product so after computing each of these products you can sum that into a variable temporal variable that will uh, compute the uh, cumulative sums of all the the products so when you finish with your for loop after visiting each of your m examples you can uh, you have already computed this z value so this sum will be this z value so when you divide uh, in, in let's say in a second four once you have computed the value of z of the sum of all these uh, d values you just uh, visit e again each of these points in your vector d t plus one and divide each of these values by c and at that time when you finish doing that you you are sure that if you sum all the new this distribution values assigned to your weight your your points that sum is going to be one so just uh, keep in mind that this z is a normalization factor okay